There is this rhetoric that traditional has been surpassed by digital, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Movies and TV still dominate the pop culture conversation. Starring in a Netflix show can catapult you to A-list status, and one of these shining examples of YouTube dominance over the mainstream, Mr. Beast Squid Game's video, which is the most viewed video on his channel, wouldn't have been as successful or even existed without traditional. This shouldn't make sense. YouTubers pull tens, sometimes hundreds of millions of views a month, make millions of dollars a year, and have a deep connection with their audience. But despite that, they're missing something. And that thing is art. YouTubers are bad storytellers. Ask anyone what their favorite stories of all time are. Not a single person will say a YouTube video. Creators have a tendency to get caught up in their own echo chambers and compare their storytelling to their peers, which in that context is better than it's ever been. But when compared to the stories we're seeing on platforms like HBO and Netflix, it's not even close. Why aren't YouTubers telling great stories? In a word, data. On a scale of artist to distributor, creators lean heavily towards distribution. They'd rather find hacks to increase their retention and click-through rate than tell better stories. And in a creator culture that is hyper-focused on these two metrics, spectacle is king. High concepts get people to click and fast-paced action keeps audiences engaged so they keep watching. The thing with spectacle though is it works best when it's married with story, but it appears the bride got cold feet and skip the wedding. One of the greatest living filmmakers today is James Cameron. He's combining story and spectacle throughout his career. Terminator, Titanic, and Avatar are all high concept action films grounded in a deeper narrative. Is there a place for pure spectacle? Sure. People love to be entertained. There's a reason that there's 10 Fast and Furious movies. Like YouTube is currently in its Fast and Furious phase. The smallest elements of story are present, but they just act as the reason to get you to the spectacle, nothing more. But why does it matter? Because the creatives that stand the test of time are the ones that are great at storytelling. Spectacle entertains you in the moment, but that moment is fleeting. Do you even know who directed the first Fast and Furious? No. His name is Rob Cohen. Can you name any of his other films? Also no. It's almost as if you don't connect with something you don't emotionally resonate with. I slept in late while you worked at the drugstore. My drug's attention, I am an addict, but I get paid to indulge in my habit. It's all an illusion. I'm wearing makeup, I'm wearing makeup, 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 makeup. Telling great stories is an art form. To tell a great story, you need to care about what you're making. You need to have intention. The problem is YouTubers don't actually care about what they're making, they just want attention. Creators churn out videos at a staggering rate, all in service of getting more views. They're on a production line of content. When one video is released, the next is being edited. Meanwhile, they're working on the thumbnail for a third, filming a fourth, and ideating a fifth. Art takes time. YouTubers have none. Art is producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power, whereas media is the main means of mass communication, things like broadcasting, publishing, and the internet. Media is creating things to be heard, art is creating things to be felt. This here lies the reason as to why creators aren't telling great stories, because they're making media and not art. Media is the plural of medium, which is an agency or means of doing something, but it also refers to the middle state or quality between two extremes. Creators aren't telling bad stories, but they aren't telling great ones either. They're somewhere in the middle. It's important to know whether you're making art or you're making media. These are two different things with two different approaches and two different measurements of success. Most creators are making media, but they'd rather be making art. Want proof? Tell your creator friends that what they make is an art. Watch them instantly become defensive and disagree with you. The most ideal scenario for any artist is to be able to make whatever they want. Most people think that becoming a full-time creator will allow them to do just that, but instead they wind up having to make whatever will appease their audience. It's not uncommon for a creator to go out for one type of content and then be stuck making that same thing over and over and over again to get views. This leads to a crisis of conscience because despite becoming a full-time creator and getting everything you've ever wanted, you're empty. It's a meaningless pursuit to make media you don't care about. There's meaning in art. This is the reason why, despite having money and success, creators will still try to make the jump to traditional. Making media will never fully satisfy someone who's artistic at heart. But then again, maybe you want to make media. Maybe media is your art form. There's nothing wrong with that. Media is powerful. It can even influence art, not through its message, but through its format. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. On August 1st, 1981, MTV came on the airwaves with a statement. The first music video they ever played was Video Killed the Radio Star. This song choice could not have been more prophetic as music television would go on to revolutionize the music industry and pop culture at large. At the time, music videos were an afterthought. Not many bands made them, and if they did, 
it was hard to convince their labels to provide them to the station. But when record executives realized that getting a video played on MTV had an impact on sales, they changed their tune. Music went from an audible art form to a visual medium. And if we zoom out even further, these videos started to impact another art form, filmmaking. Not only did the music and movies start to change, but how movies were made altogether changed. Music videos were known for their fast moving stories, quick edits, and special effects. And all of these elements started to find their way to Hollywood to satisfy the MTV generation. The very same impact that MTV had on pop culture is now being replicated by creators. Music is being made with the goal of enticing popular TikTokers to use it in their videos, and the YouTube trademarks of fast moving stories, quick edits, and unabashed exposition have started to find their way to Hollywood to satisfy the dopamine generation. What's most impressive about MTV is not only did they change pop culture once, they did it twice. What started as a platform for music videos evolved over time to pioneer reality TV. The Real World debuted in 1992 and is widely considered to be the birthplace of modern reality television. And once they found success with the format, they continued to innovate on it to keep it fresh, going from the lives of regular people to celebrities, stunts, house tours, and more. In fact, a lot of the formats we see on YouTube today are descendants of MTV shows. But now, the student has surpassed the teacher. YouTubers are currently making the best reality TV on the planet. MTV, on the other hand, is a shell of its past self. They've stopped redefining their shows and have started recycling them. Jersey Shore was huge. You know what hasn't been? Buckhead Shore or Floribama Shore. 16 and Pregnant has given birth to 16 and Recovering. There are five different versions of the challenge and ridiculousness has led to the ridiculousness that is adorableness, deliciousness, and messiness. MTV fell off, not because they stopped doing music videos, but because they stopped innovating. YouTubers are towing the line that MTV ran past on route to its downfall. The life cycle of a creator right now is to find a format that works, bleed it dry, panic because you're losing relevancy, and then start copying other successful videos so you can inflate your metrics and feel good about yourself again. Where MTV went wrong is they started rinsing and repeating the same types of shows over and over again, and people got bored. YouTubers, on the other hand, think the key to success is copying what's already worked, even though MTV has shown us it's the opposite. The YouTubers who will stand the test of time are the ones who are able to not only find a format that works, but innovate on it to keep it fresh. Mr. Beast, Eric, and Ryan Trahan have all done a great job of elevating and evolving their content over time, and as a result, are some of the most popular creators in the world right now. But that doesn't mean they're making art. Yeah, what, what, what can I do for you? Show me the money. And don't misconstrue art and creativity for the same thing. YouTubers might not be making art, but they are incredibly creative. There's a lot of talent in the creator world. There's just not a lot of artistry. But why not? Why do creators continue to make media when they'd rather be making art? Because of the incentives. YouTube isn't set up to let art thrive. This may seem odd because it's an entertainment platform, except for the fact that it's not. It's an advertising company. YouTube makes money through advertisements, therefore its algorithm will optimize for content that enables them to serve more ads so they can make more money. YouTube doesn't care what you make as long as it's brand friendly and is seen by lots of people. Further, YouTube incentivizes creatives to adhere to this model because they split the advertising revenue with them. As a result, YouTubers will optimize their content to satisfy the algorithm so they can get more views and make more money. YouTubers don't care what they make as long as it's brand friendly and gets seen by lots of people. What's the best way to be seen by lots of people? By making media, because it's the main means of mass communication, things like broadcasting, publishing, and the internet. What do you do when you put out a new YouTube video? You publish it on the internet in hopes of being seen by a broad audience. As soon as the profit engine is around viewership, your incentives change and you start making media. Media monetizes through attention, art monetizes through intention. You consume media by seeing a title or thumbnail that gets your attention, but you consume art by intentionally choosing to consume it. Nobody ever spends a long time trying to find a YouTube video to watch, but they will take their time when choosing a movie on Netflix. Media is marketing, art is impact. Art that permeates our culture has to resonate, otherwise it just fades away. Media, on the other hand, doesn't need to resonate, it just needs to get your attention. And it's able to do that over and over again with sensational headlines, ridiculous concepts, and cheap drama. If creators are incentivized to get views, they'll continue making media. And if they continue making media, they won't be telling great stories. If they aren't telling great stories, they'll never surpass traditional entertainment. Netflix is revolutionizing the way we watch TV, but some fear that Netflix could be closing the curtains on the big screen. A shift from media to art has already taken place within traditional itself. Television started as media. Its business model was predicated on maximizing viewership so they can make more money on ads. Sound familiar? During this era, TV sat in the shadow of film. You we were able to tell stories on the big screen that were unimaginable on the small one. 
The exception to the rule was HBO. Despite being a television company, it consistently released some of the greatest stories ever told. The only problem with that argument is HBO is not the exception to the rule. It proves its existence. Because HBO has never had advertisers. It's been a subscription business since it launched in 1972. The subscription business model changes the incentives around what you're creating. You're no longer trying to optimize your content to get as much attention as possible. And instead, you're trying to release the highest quality content imaginable to convince your subscribers to continue paying you every month. It's no coincidence that the debate about whether TV was better than movies started gaining momentum as more and more streaming services came into prominence. All of these platforms are subscription-based, which means they win by releasing the best content and telling the best stories. Television started overtaking movies when it stopped being media and it started being art. YouTubers haven't surpassed traditional because they aren't running the same race. Traditional is playing an artistic game while YouTube is playing a media one. This doesn't mean that creators can't overtake TV and film one day. They absolutely can. Creators have already surpassed reality TV, which is truly astounding. A bunch of kids in their bedrooms overtook an entrenched industry with decades of experience and millions to spend. Even though the deck was stacked in traditional media's favor, creators proved you should never bet against them. YouTube will never be mainstream, creators will. You can't charge for what was once free. We've seen that with the now defunct YouTube originals. YouTube doesn't need to charge though because its advertising continues to bring in billions of dollars every single month. And as long as that continues to happen, it won't change. That burden falls on the creator. If creators want to truly surpass traditional, then they have to start telling better stories. In order to tell better stories, they need to be making art and not media. In order for them to make art and not media, their incentives need to change. In order for their incentives to change, they need to become unreliant of YouTube. The problem is creators feel the need to appease the algorithm. They can make whatever they want, but instead create what they think they have to to get views. This has led us to a world where we have incredibly talented individuals wanting to make art, but instead settling for media. You can't argue that creators are making exactly what they want to make when everyone is making the same thing. Artists can make media. They can make great media, but it will never be as satisfying as creating something that is emotionally resonant with an audience. The talent to make art is there, and so is the choice. The power is in the hand of the creator now more than it has ever been. You can make whatever you want to make, tell the story you've always wanted to tell, and the only person stopping you is you.